Hey folks, I've been playing with a lot of new players lately, and I have found that I'm answering the same questions and giving out the same advice over and over, and I kind of realized that it's because there's a lot of important information uh, that one needs to know to really you know, enjoy and get the most out of Destiny 2. It's just not really... Uh, not really available all in one place uh, and easy to find for new players. So I wanted to throw together a quick guide uh, that just has a basically all of like the, the beginner tips and direction and advice that I'd give uh, all in one place. So just for what this is intending to be, um, this is just going to be some steps to go from a kind of a beginner to an intermediate skill level um a brief overview of some core mechanics and a brief you know touch on build crafting um i'm not touching on any of the the story stuff nothing about any of the campaigns or the quests or you know where to get a, a bunch of stuff uh resources terminologies uh, or any you know no mechanic guides here either uh and this isn't going to be scripted either uh, i put together this slideshow just to have um kind of all, all the main thoughts uh, that I wanted to touch on, just so people kind of follow along with it. Um, but I don't have a real script here, so this is just kind of my thoughts on uh, advice and tips uh, off the top of my head. So the main things that I wanted to kind of look at are light level, stats and armor, resources and ghost mods, builds, guns and random rolls, and then activity progression. So light level, power level, is a mechanic that I've seen some confusion on before, so I want to touch on that a little bit. So your light level is just the average score of all of your gear, plus uh, the bonus from the seasonal artifact. Um, that comes together to make the total light level of your, your character. Um, lots of mid and end game activities have a base light level, uh, they'll say something like recommended power 1800, recommended power 1815. This is the level of the enemies in that encounter, in that activity. And if you are below that, you deal less damage and you take more. Likewise, if you're above that, you deal more damage to the enemies and they deal less to you. You take less damage. Um, lots of endgame activities will also use power caps. Um, and this forces a certain level of difficulty. Um, and you'll usually see these accompanied with specific keywords. Uh, heroic, Legend, Master, Grandmaster. Uh, these activities will all state that there is a max effective power. Um, this means that if your power is higher than that threshold, you are brought down to it, but you are not raised to that threshold if you are below it. So if an activity has a power cap on it, you really want to be at or above that cap before you attempt it, or it's going to be even harder than uh, intended. So as for how to increase your light level, uh, for those that don't know about that, um, any gear drop you get will be uh, a chance for an increase until your, your average gear score is hitting 1750. After that, you need to do powerful and pinnacle uh, activities that drop powerful and pinnacle gear to raise it higher. Uh, and powerful sources can drop up to 1800, pinnacle up to 1810. Uh, the game will take a look at the highest item level you have in each of your slots. So each of your three weapons, each of your five armor pieces takes an average of that. And each powerful and pinnacle gear drop you have is going to be a, a couple points above that average. Um, and then your artifact can increase it too. But this isn't really something that you want to force leveling up your artifact just kind of happens by playing the game so don't really worry about that one uh and for those who maybe aren't familiar about you know powerful and pinnacle sources uh so they are marked on the director as this little gold coin that shows up by certain destinations uh so if you hover over them you can see like for example sapphire inspire uh it drops pinnacle gear um and then let's see there's maternity you can get powerful or pinnacle gear from. So these are sources of gear that can bring you above 1750 uh, and above 1800. So next, stats and armor. 
first piece of advice, most important piece of advice, I always give a player uh, if they're new, get 100 resilience score, always. Uh, resilience in PVE gives you damage reduction based off of what tier you reach. Uh, tier 10 resilience is a 30% damage reduction. And this stacks with any other sources of damage reduction. Um, in PVE, the most important thing is to be alive. It's to stay alive. It doesn't matter what your builds and weapons are doing if you're dying. So 100 resilience, by far the most important. This should come before any other part of your build. You should never sacrifice this, especially as a newer intermediate player. Also, when it comes to stats, it's better to min-max things. Um, having average stats across the board is worse than having 100 in like two stats and then, you know, 80 or 90 in a third one, right? If you can control your stat allocation, you want to really prioritize uh, a few stats over getting all of them kind of high. Also, most builds and classes can ignore some of the stats in the game. So there's only six, and like half of them don't matter. Intellect, just everyone ignores it in PvE. Uh, every single class can get their super by just doing damage. Uh, there are armor bots that give you energy for your super, uh, orbs of power. You'll get your super way quicker by just playing the game and having a good build than you would by recharging it naturally through intellect. So intellect on armor is just not worth it ever. Mobility is the exact same for Titans and Warlocks specifically. They don't care about this stat. It does nothing for them. Um, strength is kind of the uh, kind of the more finicky one. Um, so Titans have enough strength builds uh, to where I think that it, it is valuable for them. Hunters can kind of ignore it because they have access to Gambler's Dodge, which skips the melee cooldown. And then Warlocks, they just don't have very many melee builds. There are very, very, very few uh, Warlock builds that use the power of melee first and foremost. So while there are situations you would want a high strength on a Warlock, as a new player, uh, or even as an intermediate player um, who maybe doesn't have the best gear yet, strength is something that you probably don't want to prioritize over resilience and discipline and recovery as a Warlock. So those stats you can kind of you can kind of ignore uh you know depending on your class uh armor mods armor mods are super helpful you won't be able to use a bunch of them as an or player uh your armor won't be upgraded enough to put on a bunch of armor mods but that's okay even just putting on some resilience increasing mods uh can help a ton same thing with damage resistance mods these go on the chess piece you're an encounter that has a lot of arc damage but on some arc resistance mods they'll help you survive um so armor mods super useful as for getting a hold of better armor um as a newer player it will take some time so as you get armor just randomly through playing uh, a lot of it's just going to be stuff you discard right off the bat uh as a newer player things you know around like the 50 plus stat you know total is, is probably worth holding on to uh, eventually you should start aiming for 60 and higher but the important part is that the stats have to be allocated well right so if you have a really high stat piece of armor but the stats are in you know mobility and intellect and strength then you know it doesn't matter the armor isn't good so you should keep it right the the important part is that you have high stat points in the good stats for your specific build um, or builds. So that's what you want to keep an eye out for. Um, this next part is a little outside of a beginner, um, outside of a beginner's reach, but I get asked this. And so where can I get good armor, right? Where, where can I get armor that is better than just the random junk I get in the world? Well, there's two main ways. So seasonal, armor focusing is the first one you need to own the season pass for this and this goes across all of the different seasons so uh defiance deep and witch right now and whatever the next season is the specific piece focusing right so when you're focusing helmets or chest or legs or arms those drop generally um you know 
good to high stat rolls, right? Like we're talking 60 plus usually. Um, they're not always perfect, but like this is by far the most consistent and easiest way to get um, pretty pretty damn good armor right off the bat. Uh, and it's easy to do. You just need to own the season pass and get to the point where you can focus the armor. You don't want to just open the engrams by, you know, by default. It has to be specifically focusing uh, specific armor slots, right? Not generic armor focusing, not just generic engram opening. And then there's Pit of Heresy. So if you have the Shadow Keep expansion, you have the Pit of Heresy dungeon. You can get access to Pit of Heresy by completing the campaign. The final boss of Pit of Heresy uh, always drops armor, and it's always good armor. Um, it's always 60 plus stat roll, and so it is very common for players to farm this boss because he's very easy to farm, and the reward for doing it is very good. Um, especially for like intermediate uh, to high level players, right? You know, hardcore players don't really need this. Uh, new players probably aren't, you know, capable of doing it yet. But once you move from new to intermediate, this is a, a really good place to look into getting your, your gear um, improved. So Pit of Heresy, Dungeon Final Boss, great place to get armor. Seasonal focusing, great place to get armor. So then we have resources and ghost mods. So as a new player, you are going to be pretty restricted on your resources. Enhancement cores, prism, shards, they're all gonna be really scarce. So be, you know, just think before you spend these things. Uh, make sure to do core bounties from Banshee when you play. Uh, he's got four per day per character that are just kill enemies using a, a specific type of gun and it gives an enhancement core. As a new player uh, who maybe doesn't have the ability to get enhancement cores from some of the harder activities, these are really important to help you get the resources you need to progress and play the game. Uh, ghost mods can help a lot too. So there is glimmer increasing mods. These are great as a new player because you know all your subclass aspects, abilities, and fragments, these all cost a bunch of glimmer. You need glimmer to upgrade things, you need glimmer to buy, you know, bounties. So ghost mod for bonus glimmer, great. There's the stat focusing mods, right? These mods guarantee that any armor you get has a minimum of 10 in whatever stat you have selected. This just increases the odds that the armor you get is good. So on like a Titan, you would use something like, you know, maybe a resilience focus mod. Um, and then, you know, Hunter and Warlock, probably discipline. Um, and then there's activity resource mods. So there's mods for all the ritual activities, Vanguard. Crucible Gambit that can give you enhancement cores, prisms, or extra loot drops at the end of the activity. All, you know, really good ideas to use. Um, and so as for, you know, kind of where to invest these materials early on, like the best place to kind of spend them, my recommendations would be your ghost and your class item. So you're not going to replace your ghost, you know, basically ever unless you, you know, want a different visual appearance, right? Ghosts don't have any, you know, mechanical benefit to using different ghosts. They just look different. So if you upgrade one ghost at the, you know, beginning of your time playing, you can use that ghost forever, right? It's always going to be good. I'm still using the very first ghost that I masterworked to this day because there's no point in, you know, not using it, right? So masterwork your ghost and put on that bonus glimmer mod put on that bonus enhancement core mod to get extra resources. Uh, and then your class item. It's kind of a similar situation uh, from, from the ghost. It's a little different. So, you know, class items don't have random stat rolls. So they, you know, the first class item you get is going to be identical to every other one um, until you get to very end game activities. We're talking like, you know, raiding and master activities. Uh, stuff that you need to be, you know, a lot more experienced with. As a new to intermediate player, um, your class item is going to be identical to every other class item you get. So you can just masterwork one of them and then just use it the entire time, right? That lets you put higher cost stat mods on it, you know, get more resilience up, and lets you put other mods on it too that will help you a lot as you play the game. 
Um, then, you know, other items that you can upgrade. Uh, armor, I'd be a little hesitant on, just because, like I, I talked about, you're going to replace a lot of your armor over time as you get better armor. Um, but it may be worth doing uh, a little bit of upgrading on them, right? You may want to upgrade them enough to get, you know, maybe just enough uh, mod slots on it uh, or enough energy on it to put in like a resilience mod and then stop. Um, as soon as armor upgrading stops, you know, or, or starts to cost enhancement cores or prisms, I would stop upgrading it as a new player. Uh, you only want to spend those resources on armor you know you're going to keep, especially when those resources are scarce. So wait for a really good armor drop before upgrading those. Um, the exception to this is potentially exotic armor pieces. If you get a decent exotic armor piece, uh, you might end up holding on to that for a while. Um, and so it may be worth upgrading that a little bit. Um, I probably wouldn't spend Ascendant Shards on a exotic armor piece that is only okay uh, stat-wise, um, but maybe some maybe some cores and prisms, uh, maybe. And then weapon upgrading is a waste of resources. Uh, it only gives you a couple of stat points. It's just a, a glimmer and enhancement core sync. It's not worth upgrading your weapons, um, so you can completely ignore that. It doesn't matter. Save your resources for more important things. So then there are builds. Um, builds are a very important part about Destiny, and they can be a night and day difference between playing without a build or with a bad one versus with a good build, right? You know, you may find something that was a huge struggle before becomes uh, a piece of cake with a good build on. Uh, the, the gap between a good and a bad build or like the best and the worst builds is, is just huge. It's huge in Destiny. Um, and so you'll really feel it once you, you know, try out some of these better builds. Um, but, but it can be hard to get a build started as a new player, just because you probably don't have, you know, maybe the exotic armor pieces or the fragments and aspects. Uh, you may not have, you know, very good armor, you know, but you can at least get started and there are decisions you can make to make things easier and start walking down that path. So some, you know, the first part is that some of these subclasses uh, already have a very strong foundation without an exotic armor piece, right? There are some subclasses that live and die by their exotic armor, but others are fine without them. Um, eventually, once you get a hold of exotic armor, you want to be using it, right? Exotic weapons, you don't always want an exotic weapon on, but exotic armor, you do. Uh, virtually every build in the game um, revolves around an exotic armor piece in some way or another. So once you get them, you want to use them, but they're, they're a little hard to get, right? So the main ways to get exotic armor right now, there are the uh, exotic engrams that just randomly drop or that you get through the ritual uh, ritual activities, right? Those can give exotic engrams, but these will only give you certain exotics, right? Only um, only like free-to-play exotics, if I recall, uh, Red War era. Then for exotics that belong to uh, DLCs, these have to be unlocked uh, in order to, you know, in order to get them and see them drop from exotic engrams. So first you have to own the DLC and then you have to either do solo legend lost sectors uh, or you have to do Vex strike force events. These are the two main ways to get a hold of these exotics. Now, between the two, Vex strike force is infinitely better in my opinion. So lost sectors, not only are they boring, as a new player, they are going to be very difficult. Uh, you have to do them alone to get exotics, and they are very high light level. They have champions. Um, it's it's just not great. Um, and so, if you want to get a hold of exotic armor, you know, quickly as a newer player, keep an eye out for Vex Strike Force. This requires the Lightfall DLC, 
They are on Neo Muna. They are random world events um, and they're group events, right? So you can have up to three people in a fire team. So two of your friends can join you when one happens and other people randomly in the world can also uh, partake in the event. So you'll see you know, other players doing it too. Um, there are servers that send out pings for uh, for Vex Strike Force, right? Discord servers, Telegram channels um, that send out alerts for when these are happening. And if you just happen to be, you know, online and gaming when one happens, just pause whatever you're doing, go pop up in the Vex Strike Force, participate, clear it, and then get your exotic be on your way. Um, and these are really uh easy to do um you know just show up with like a tracker cannon and you know some decent special or heavy weapons to do damage to the bosses um and you know run resilience run resist mods right uh if you're if you're alone or only with like one other person they can be a little hard so you, you really want to group up for these um but they are considerably easier for a new player to participate in especially if there are a couple of um, more experienced players who are there. Uh, you just need to help them out, right? Help out the, the veterans, um, you know, debuff the bosses, uh, heal people, you know, do, do what you can. And as long as you participate and the event's cleared, you get a guaranteed exotic at the end. And if you don't have an exotic armor piece unlocked, it's guaranteed to be a piece that you are missing, which is the important part, right? So that's a good way to get exotic armor. So next, when putting together your build, um, there are some important things to keep in mind. So first, after 100 resilience, it is more important for your build to work than it is to have high stats, right? You want to pick fragments and armor mods that enable your build to work fluidly and, you know, get your abilities up often, make you do more damage, keep you alive. It's more important to have those than it is to have higher stats. Then, when actually, you know, picking out your, your stats and your armor, what armor you're going to wear, use D2 Armor Picker. It is a website, and it will look through all of the armor you have, and you can plug in some, you know, basic things like, this is the subclass I'm using, these are the fragments, this is the exotic I want to use, and tell it I want to try and get 100 resilience it will then show you what armor you can put on and what mods to use in order to get 100 resilience while having all of those other things equipped it is so useful and makes you know putting together a build uh much easier than doing all the you know the manual math of picking out which armor to use to get what stats right d2 armor picker is incredible every end game player uses this website then as for builds what you know what does a build do right there are some core pillars of what a build does um and only one of these is mandatory so i have five things here survivability is the only mandatory part of a good build right if you are making a build and you cannot stay alive while you are playing with the build something needs to change right um if you are dead you're not killing enemies you're not doing mechanics so it doesn't matter what your build does if you can't stay alive with it then the other parts are add clear killing big hordes of weak enemies major killing killing single or small groups of tough enemies boss damage, dealing as much damage as possible to very big boss enemies uh, who might take multiple phases, and then, you know, utility, generating ammunition, uh, stunning enemies, healing allies, you know, things like that, right? Um, stuff not related to staying alive yourself or killing things. So the better a build is, the more of these things that it does and the better that it does them, right? So a good build either does some or all of these things well, or it does a few of these things extremely well and maybe suffers a little bit of one or two other things. 
each class in this game has an easy mode build that basically does all of these things, or most of them, quite well. So on Titan, that's Syntho Hammer, uh, Sunbreaker Titan with Syntheseps and the Throwing Hammer. Uh, Hunter has Arc, Assassin's Cal plus Combination Blow. And then Warlock has uh, Solar Warlock with Sun Bracers and Solar Grenades. These classes, when, you know, built correctly, are all extremely strong. I would say that the Titan is probably the strongest and easiest overall. I think that the Warlock has the strongest potential, but requires um, a little bit of skill to like fully realize it, but it's good on you know basically anybody. They just need a little bit of practice to kind of get the feel for it. And then the Hunter one is kind of, it's kind of in between. It requires a little bit of practice to get a feel for it, but once you get a feel for it, it's extremely good. It's very safe uh, and it deals great, you know, great area damage, great major damage, great boss damage. So all of these three builds, these are, you know, there's one for each class. That's why I listed them all here. If you are struggling with content, these are good builds to try out uh, to try and make the game a little easier. Now, all that being said, I just talked about, you know, good builds, uh, what the best stuff is and all that. You don't need to use the best things all the time, right? It's okay to try out other stuff that you just think is fun or unique. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but you should understand that whether or not you're, you know, struggling with something has, you know, kind of two factors, right? There's your individual skill as a player, and then your, you know, there's the power of the gear and the build that you're bringing. And those two things kind of average out, right? So a really strong player can do well on a really weak build, um, but they will still be outdone by a strong player on a strong build, right? So it's kind of the average of those two things. And then, you know, uh, a newer player, a less experienced player will have an easier time on a strong build than they will a weak build, right? So. You know, it's okay to play weaker stuff, but if you're struggling, you may want to try a stronger build. Um, if you aren't really struggling and you just want to have fun or try out something new, you know, nothing wrong with that, right? Try other stuff. Spread out, learn what you like, because you may find new things you enjoy, and try to understand as you're playing the game, what is, you know, what are the strengths of the tools that I'm using right now? And, and what are their drawbacks? What are their shortcomings? Because being able to identify that, uh, you know, that detail or those details can really, you know, it helps your game sense and it helps you plan out future builds and make future decisions because rather than needing to actually put them into practice and learn from experience, you'll be able to make educated guesses about, you know, what something might be good or strong at and start to you know account for that ahead of time then we have guns and rolls so first off uh, general advice for what weapons to equip uh, you should always try to have one primary and one special weapon on so special weapons are just a lot stronger than primary weapons but they tend to be more specialized in their use and obviously have more limited ammo. Double special is really common among endgame players, but it requires practice and game knowledge to be able to use it without running into ammo issues. So I would not worry about this, right? For now, stick with one primary, one special, and have the right gun for the right role. So Primary weapons, 99% of the time, are for killing red bar adds, right? These are just for dropping weak enemies, um, and they don't really do anything beyond that. Uh, and I should clarify, this is specifically for legendary weapons, right? Exotics break the mold sometimes. This is for legendary weapons. Uh, and then for special weapons, most specials, right? Shotguns, sniper rifles, uh, fusion rifles. These are for killing major enemies, right? Orange bars, beefier enemies that are more dangerous. Uh, if it takes like 
you know, two or three magazines to kill one of these enemies uh, with a primary weapon, it'll probably only take like two or three shots to kill them with a special weapon, right? Uh, then there are wave frames. This is a special type of, uh, of special ammo grenade launcher. These are ad clear weapons. So they are ammo efficient. They do damage across a big area, but it's not a lot of damage compared to most other specials. So they're really good at killing lots of, of weak red bar enemies. So if you're an encounter where you have tons of, of fodder enemies, or your build is really good at killing stronger enemies, but not good at ad clearing, a wave frame does a great job. And then there are some edge cases, some special uses, right? So trace rifles, these are just kind of like slightly stronger primaries. Um, they are mostly used for double special builds. So trace rifles, they're cool, but they're kind of useless as a newer intermediate player. Um, and there's blinding grenade launchers, right? These are GLs with the disorienting grenades perk. Uh, these basically kind of incapacitate uh, all enemies nearby where the grenade explodes at, uh, stopping them from shooting you. Super duper useful to fire one into a crowd of enemies and just, you know, make them all stop shooting for like, you know, eight seconds or something like that. So there, there are some special weapons that have, you know, more niche but you know still useful uh applications and then there's heavy weapons these vary a lot so you have machine guns grenade launchers rockets linears swords right these things can do ad clear they can do major killing they can do boss damage uh they can do utility uh it really depends on what perks they have some weapons uh only fill like one or two roles at most right like machine guns and swords um you know machine guns are basically just add clear uh swords you can add clear with them but they're really not great for it they're more of like a like a major boss damage thing or utility um linears especially these are really just like majors and boss damage uh but then you have stuff like rockets which can basically fill any role based off of the perks that are on the rocket so your heavy slot can do pretty much anything uh it just depends on what you have uh, in the heavy slot then take advantage of crafting right as a new player um getting a hold of a good weapon is going to be uh incredibly luck based right you don't have access to all the activities where good guns might drop from um you may not own all the dlcs etc uh crafted weapons especially seasonal ones are incredibly easy to get and they're very easy to get a good roll of because once you have the pattern you can just pick the perks uh same goes for weapons from neomuna from the witch queen throne world uh from dares of eternity right these are all places that are fairly easy to get a hold of uh the crafted weapons for there are also raid crafted weapons but these are going to be uh, outside of the reach of newer players for the time being but Crafted weapons are special because they are very easy to get a hold of uh, the right uh, combination of perks on, whereas other sources are a lot more RNG dependent. And kind of speaking of perks, some perks are meant for PvE, some are for PvP, and some perks are just outright bad um, everywhere. So an example of these are Eye of the Storm, this is a perk that is very good for PvP, uh, but it doesn't really do anything in PvE. It's not really useful there. And Frenzy is kind of the opposite of that. This is a perk that is very, very good in PvE, but it is super duper niche in PvP. It's very hard to use there, and so it's not really a great PvP perk. Then there are perks like, say, Slick Draw, which are just bad. These perks are not good uh, they either do nothing or they are actively detrimental. So these perks should be avoided when you can. Um, on PvE guns, there are usually specific combos of perks that you want uh, on a gun. Um, this isn't universal, but the you know the outline I have here is something to follow like 90% of the time, right? So for primary weapons, usually want some combination of a damage perk and a reload perk, right? 
you'll usually see a damage perk in the fourth column of the weapon perks, and you'll usually see a reload in column three. Um, not always, but usually. So a damage perk, right? This is something that increases the weapon's damage or does damage on a specific thing happening. So something like Frenzy, which I had in the uh, above ex example, is, is great, right? Frenzy is a fantastic damage perk. Adrenaline Junkie, um, Swashbuckler, Golden Tricorn, One for All, Explosive Payload, all good damage perks. Reload perks, right? These are things that either help you uh, reload the gun faster or get more ammo per reload, right? A primary weapon is going to be in your hands at least 75% of the time, and you're going to reload it a lot. So reloading it faster or reloading, you know, or getting more ammo per reload are you know, really beneficial. Think stuff like Feeding Frenzy, um, Subsistence, right? Ambitious Assassin, Outlaw. These are all great reload perks. Uh, on a primary weapon, you don't really want perks that load the weapon while you're not holding it, right? Auto loading holster, reconstruction, envious assassin. These perks are better for special and heavy weapons. Now for special and heavy weapons, you usually want some type of damage or utility perk paired with a reload or an ammo perk. Like said, there are exceptions. Sometimes you do double damage. Sometimes you do double utility. Uh, but this is a pretty good, you know, outline. So for uh, a weapon like a shotgun or a fusion, you want perks that either help you kill major enemies quicker um, or things that uh, enhance an aspect of your build or do something, you know, that no other gun can do. So in a shotgun, think like trench barrel or surrounded for bonus damage uh, or one-two punch for utility on a shotgun, right? Uh, and then we have stuff like reload and ammo perks. So, you know, auto loading holster, reconstruction, envious assassin, all those perks I mentioned, those are not good on primaries. Those are great on special weapons because you only pull out the special weapon uh, on special occasions, right? It's not your main gun. Pull it out when you need it. So having these perks that automatically reload the gun when you're using a different gun are super useful. Uh, and then stuff like ammo perks, right? Lead from gold, field prep, right? These are perks that give you more ammo for your special weapon. And then for something like a sniper, triple tap, fourth times the charm. These are also very good perks. They generate ammo out of thin air if you're able to get headshots. Stuff like this, great on a special weapon. And this is basically true for heavy weapons as well, right? So that's the type of stuff that you want to look for on these types of guns most of the time. And then there are perks that have like build crafting synergy in them, uh, especially elemental stuff, right? So we have things like incandescent for solar builds, bolt shot for arc, repulsor brace, destabilizing rounds for void, uh, stasis has chill clip, strand has hatchling, right? So we have all these perks that might do something uh, with a special, you know, elemental verb, and you might be able to do some, some build crafting stuff with them. Uh, that you might not be able to do with normal perks. So when you are picking out your guns and, you know, what perks that you want on them, you want to think about, you know, making the gun better at the role that it is supposed to fulfill, right? So we don't want Vorpal on a primary weapon because primary weapons aren't for shooting bosses. Um, you want to have perks that enhance their, you know, the weapon strengths, and you want to equip guns that cover the, the gaps of your build, right? Or you want to have a build that covers the gaps of your guns. If your build is really good at ad clearing, but struggles against killing tough enemies, you want to make sure that you're having a really good special weapon for killing those big enemies, right? As for actually figuring out, you know, what guns can, you know, can you get and what perks can they have? Uh, LightGG is a great website to see uh, all sorts of guns and what perks they have, you know, where to find them, that type of stuff. It also shows uh, perks by popularity, which can, you know, help you get a feel for what is good on a gun. Um, this isn't, you know, it's not perfect 100% of the time, but it's like a good starting point um, to get a vibe for 
what you may want to get on a gun. Uh, just be aware that for this website, um, popularity is a uh, it, it includes both PVE and PVP. Uh, so a gun that has uses in both places or that has use in PVP might have some perks rated very popular on it that aren't good in PVE. So just keep that in mind. Um, and then, of course, the most important part is get a feel for what perks you like on a gun and what types of guns you like. Everybody's going to have favorite play styles, favorite guns, favorite perks, right? Try out a bunch of stuff and figure out, you know, wow, I really like the way these feel. Uh, or, hey, this is a cool perk. I want to use it more. Find that type of stuff out and then, you know, look for things that are similar to it that might be you know better or slightly different um, and you know just keep an eye out for that type of stuff now as for activity progression so as a new player the first things that you're going to be doing are the basic campaigns uh, you're going to be exploring patrol zones taking care of simple quests and doing strikes um, and once you are you know kind of ready to start branching out from that, uh, the very first thing I would recommend trying out are Heroic Nightfalls. So these are a power capped activity, but it is a very small cap. Um, and there are champions there, right? So champions are present in a lot of endgame activities, and it's important to learn how to deal with them. So champions are enhanced versions of normal enemies that are stronger and have special abilities. Overload champs always heal. Barrier champs can throw up an invincible shield, and while the shield is up, they will heal. And unstoppable champions uh, have very strong damage resistance, and they are much more aggressive. Uh, every champion can also be stunned by certain uh, abilities and by certain weapons based off of the seasonal artifact. When stunned, the champion's special ability turns off uh, and they become uh, incapacitated and you can kill them much more easily. So learning how to stun champions and you know always having the right tools to deal with them is very important. In low level activities, you can brute force some champions, but as the activities get harder, this becomes less and less viable. Now, while I did just recommend Heroic Nightfalls, I have to add just a little, you know, little side note. Some Nightfalls are much harder than others, right? There are some easy Nightfalls, um, you know, comparative to others, such as Devil's Lair and Fallen Saber. And then you have Nightfalls that fall on the more difficult side of the spectrum, such as the Light Blade or some of the newer battlegrounds uh, that have been added to the uh, Nightfall playlist. So if you are really struggling with one of these, uh, just be aware it may be because the Nightfall itself is harder than some of the other ones. Um, it would be nice if these were better balanced, uh, but unfortunately the difficulty of uh, the different Nightfalls can vary quite a bit. Still, I think that a Heroic Nightfall is the best first step to take um, as a new player towards starting to improve your skill uh, because it introduces you to power cap activities and champions. There are some other activities that are also power capped that can be good to get some experience in. I believe uh, modern seasonal activities also have a power cap, um, but not all of them have champions. Uh, but still, they are a good place to start. Um, and then I believe Neomuna, uh, as a patrol zone, has a power cap on it. Um, but like said, there are no champions, and it's a patrol zone, so there's no hard objective. Um, so, But it is a, a decent place to explore, just to you know, get more used to stronger enemies. So... If you are able to do Heroic Nightfalls, the next step is to either start looking into Legendary Activities or Dungeons. So Dungeons, these are like miniature raids, they are for three people, and you will explore uh, and 
do multiple encounters uh, that are either puzzles, ad clear, or bosses, or some combination of you know, some or all of those things. They are not uh, by default level capped. Uh, normal dungeons are never level capped. There are master dungeons, but those are for much later. So uh, when it comes to dungeons, they follow a pretty general trend in that the older the dungeon is, uh, the easier it is. So a good starter dungeon is something like Pit of Heresy, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, not only is it uh, more accessible, uh, the encounters are not as difficult as modern dungeons. Uh, it's a very good dungeon reward-wise because of the armor at the end. The guns in it aren't that useful, but it has a very good exotic weapon through the Xenophage quest, and the armor that it drops is useful for new players. Um, then there are other older dungeons, such as Shattered Throne and Prophecy. Uh, these don't really have the best loot in the world, but you know they are uh, great experiences and much more accessible to new players. Then you start kind of moving up to more modern dungeons. These will get a little bit more challenging, but I wouldn't say outright hard until you get to the newest dungeon, Ghost of the Deep. Uh, and even that, a intermediate level player should be able to get through with a good build on. So dungeons are a great place to explore once you are a little bit more familiar with the game. They're very fun with friends, um, and they're very commonly done uh, by a bunch of people in the community. So you can easily find groups to do dungeons. Then there are legend activities, right? Legend seasonal activities, legend nightfalls, legend bears of eternity, legend lost sectors. These have better loot than the base versions, but are, you know, obviously harder. Uh, these are level capped activities. So you will be forced to be a certain level below the enemies, uh, which can make things challenging. Uh, many of them will also have champions. Lost Sectors uh, are actually a little bit of an exception to this. So Lost Sectors aren't level capped. They are the only activity that uses stuff like the Legend and Master keyword, but they do not have a level cap on them, right? Only activities that don't do that. Um, if you can run them solo, you can get exotic armor, um, and they also drop enhancement cores and prisms, um, and you can actually get those in groups too. Uh, so you have to be solo to get the exotic, but the prisms and cores, you can get those from groups. So some people do farm these in groups uh, to get crafting resources um, and currencies. But um, while I suggest to go to dungeons and legend activities next, this is kind of the point where you really want to make sure that you have the right gear on uh, if you are still kind of newer to the game and learning. So these activities, right, the legend activities and dungeons, if you are trying to do these without a decent uh, build on um, or lacking uh, at least, you know, okay weaponry, you will find them very difficult um, and it might feel even impossible at times, right? Now, this is going to be, you know, it, again, it's a mix of a game sense and skill thing, but it's also 100% a gear situation. If you are doing a dungeon, you really want to have weapons that are good for killing lots of enemies, and you want to have weapons that are good for dealing damage to the boss, right? Rockets, swords, linears, all very popular for this, rockets especially. Uh, if you have good weapons for dealing with a boss, you will have less phases in total, right? If you are you know, only doing a little bit of damage at a time, you might you know, have five, six, or seven phases, and not only does that drag on and become tedious, it introduces more opportunities for mistakes. So you want to make sure that you have the right equipment on ahead of time, because if you can kill a boss in only two or three phases, uh, you'll have a much better time. Then with legend activities, like mentioned, there are going to be champions in them. Make sure that you have anti-champion weapons. Then in a lot of legend and above activities, there are surges. Uh, these will increase the damage of abilities and weapons that match a certain element, right? Like a solar surge will increase the damage of solar subclass abilities and solar weaponry. So 
if you are doing activities like these, it's wise to take advantage of the surges to get that bonus damage uh, and make the activities easier. Of course, you also always want to be at 100 resilience when doing these, and you want to have uh, resistance mods on. Um, especially in Legend and Above activities, these activities can have threats on them, right? These are like the opposite of surges. Surges benefit you, threats benefit enemies. So if there is an arc threat on, all enemies that do arc damage will do bonus damage to you. So if you see there's an arc threat on, you may want to wear extra arc resistance mods to offset the bonus damage you will take. Then, kind of the last thing here is just some places that you can farm stuff if you're a newer player and you need resources. So seasonal activities, ritual activities, and some rotators are great places to spend time to you know farm up some, some decent gear or some resources. So ritual playlists are fantastic. The Vanguard playlist is very accessible and it has good gear in it, right? Same thing with Crucible and Gambit. These are a little bit less accessible because they involve PvP, but there's still good stuff in there. Um, and eventually, if you are a PvP you know, enjoyer, you might find there's some useful things there. But these playlists, they're easy to you know kind of step into, Vanguard especially. They have some good gear in there and a couple of pieces of gear that are actually extremely good um so you know good places to look seasonal stuff exact same right seasonal activities they give you weapons from the season uh which you can unlock the weapon patterns with in order to craft them you will get engrams for the season if you save these engrams you can do the armor focusing that i talked about earlier in order to get good armor so then there's stuff like the rotating lost sectors and the dungeons. So the lost sector rotates daily. Uh, some lost sectors are much easier than other ones, right? So like Neomuna lost sectors are pretty challenging compared to stuff like Bunker E15 on Europa or like most of the Dreaming City uh, lost sectors, right? So some of them are easier. And if you need to do a Legend Lost Sector for whatever reason, keep an eye out for the easier ones. Dungeons, same situation, right? Keep an eye out for dungeons that might be, uh, you know, more accessible to you to farm them, right? Pit of Heresy is the number one thing that I'd point out here for a new to intermediate player. But there are other dungeons that may have a gun or an exotic that you want. And when it's the Dungeon of the Week, you can farm it to try and get a hold of that. Um, not every dungeon uh, is great for farming. Not every encounter inside of a dungeon is great for farming. Some things are much slower to farm than others. Uh, and I'm not really going to touch on the specifics there, but just keep an eye out for what the weekly featured activities are uh, because you will probably get a little bit more uh, mileage, you know, a little bit more bang from your buck for the time that you invest in them. So last thing, these are just some uh, extra notes that I didn't really, uh, I didn't really think fit into anywhere else. So first off, uh, third party websites. Destiny 2 is a game that is unfortunately best enjoyed when you are using uh, third party tools to enhance your experience, right? The biggest one of these is the Destiny Item Manager or DIM. It is a lifesaver for moving items around from your vault to your character. Uh, you can do it from anywhere in the game. You don't have to go stop at the vault, the tower. It is so nice, right? D2 Armor Picker, I mentioned this one. It is great for finding armor to make a certain build and min-max your stats. Light GG. This is a database. It's got all of the weapons in the game, got what perks they can have. You can get some, some you know, data on what's popular on them. The Destiny Data Compendium. This is a spreadsheet maintained by the community. It's got exact numbers on a bunch of things like perks and fragments uh, and armor mods. You can see exactly how much damage something does, how long a buff lasts. Uh, unfortunately, this game's descriptions on stuff like abilities, mods, and perks 
are just all super vague and they lack information and that sucks because it is just really confusing you don't know what's good you don't know what's bad something that is bad may re you know sound really good on paper something that sounds bad on paper may actually be really good you don't know without having the information laid out before you so destiny data compendium super useful for that uh loot and gram it is a super good website for just tracking your crafting pattern progress uh it shows all of the weapon patterns where you can get them it shows you how many you have left uh to grab um whether or not you can unlock more during that week or whether or not you have to wait till next week um it's just a super useful site for crafting weapons and then there's a bunch more uh there there are so many websites that make playing this game uh much more enjoyable next it is not a bad idea to make a character for each of the three classes even if you are only going to play one of them um there are a lot of things in this game that have a you know a lockout or a cooldown per character or per class instead of per account so things like banshee's gunsmith bounties for example these are a uh, per character uh, lockout so if you have three characters you can buy the bounties from him that give enhancement cores on all of them letting you go from four enhancement cores a day to 12. this can be really useful as a new player when you you know are constantly starved for these resources then things like dungeons and eventually like raids uh if they are not farmable ones their loot lockouts are per class. So if you have a hunter, a titan, and a warlock, you can do these activities on each class and get loot each time, right? And obviously that doesn't matter for the armor, but it gives you more chance at the weapons and the exotics. Next, uh, don't be afraid to search for guides, right? This game is confusing as hell at times. Um, sometimes things bug out. Sometimes they're very uh, ambiguous or not at all like clear on what you need to do. Um, don't be afraid to just look up stuff on the internet. Uh, this is a very old game too. So sometimes things change. There's a lot of word of mouth rumor, that type of stuff. Um, if you are ever kind of confused or stuck on something, uh, just, you know, search around a little bit. Uh, you know, check Reddit, check some content creators, look up some guides nothing wrong with that whatsoever do not feel ashamed if you like to explore and figure out things for yourself that's great too just you know do whatever works best for you but if you need it there is information online next uh, especially for new and intermediate players consistency is better than theoretically optimal a lot of people love to watch content creators that are doing crazy stuff. But it is important to remember that most content creators are very skilled. They play the game as a job and they will be able to do things that the average player is not capable of. And just because they are able to do it does not mean that it is the best choice for the average player, right? So it is better for the average player to do something you know consistent over optimal right so an advanced player may do you know a multiple weapon swap rotation for boss damage right they may swap between three weapons they may you know swap builds or loadouts or weapons during the damage phase as a newer player just find a good gun and have a good build that will keep you alive right it's more important to stay alive and use something consistent you know just focus on getting the activity done uh, and building your skill and practicing. And then last is just try out lots of stuff and learn what you enjoy, right? Play the different subclasses, try the different armor exotics, try different guns, health, try the different classes. Experiment around, Destiny has a ton and a ton of things to try out and you never know whether or not you will find something that you actually really end up enjoying uh, without trying it first so 
you know, try stuff out. But like I mentioned earlier with the build stuff, try to be, um, try to analyze the things that you try out and identify, you know, why something might feel strong or why something might feel weak or why something may fit a particular niche, right? Because not only will, you know, experimenting with lots of stuff help you find things that you enjoy, it will also just help you learn more about the game and be able to make better decisions and have stronger game sense. All right, I think that about wraps up uh, everything that I wanted to touch on for this uh, video. Like I said, this wasn't scripted. I just kind of rambled about all the general tips and advice that I tend to give new players starting off because I wanted to have it all in one place. So I hope that this was useful. Um, I did try to kind of speed through this because I knew there was a lot of information and I didn't want this video to be you know, too much rambling for too long. Uh, so I hope what was in here was useful and that I you know, did a good job explaining the things that I decided to include. If there was anything in here that was confusing, uh, maybe I didn't do a, a very good job explaining uh, or justifying something, um, or perhaps I didn't give an example of something and uh, it really would have been better for me to, uh, please let me know. Um, write a comment or send me a DM uh, and just, you know, let me know, you know, what parts of the, the video you think are, you know, could use some more explanation uh, or detail. Let me know if you think I missed anything or if you have, say, any other questions that I should have uh, answered in the video. Um, I will do my best to update the description with any, you know, any information that I think is important that I might have missed uh, or that people have asked for. And if I get enough feedback on this and it seems like it would be worthwhile, uh, I may do another uh, recording, another take of this um, with the adjustments uh, made. But for now, uh, I want to get this out there. So this is going to be good enough for the time being, I hope. Uh, and I hope that the information in here is useful to you. I hope that you have at least, you know, learned one or two new things, if not much more. And I hope that it gives you a little bit more direction and confidence on what to do, how to improve. Uh, and I hope that it, it just helps you enjoy the game more. Uh, thank you for watching.